Hello and welcome to the video lecture associated with transparency objectives. Um, remember, in this distributed database management system environment, uh, we want uh, the user's experience to be transparent. Uh, so first of all, um, we don't want the user to need to know where the data resides. They make a request and that request gets satisfied uh, by the database management system and the distributed database management system logic. Uh, we want replication transparency. The user and the application does not need to know about the duplicated efforts. Um, all they need to know is that they're getting uh, as much information as we can possibly get them, suffice to say. Uh, they don't need to know that there's any kind of latency uh, and that kind of stuff. So um, when the user, uh, the user doesn't need to know that they're uh, dealing with replicated data. Um, failure transparency, uh, again, when it comes to transactions, either all or none of the actions of that transaction are committed. So it should behave just as if they were working in a locally consolidated database management system. Each site needs a transaction manager uh, because if you're making an update to, for instance, horizontally partitioned data and your update statement affects information that's stored at a variety of distributed nodes, each of those nodes needs to handle uh, and log the transactions uh, and the before and after images at those sites. Um, so the success has to come back from all of the sites or uh, none of the sites can process uh, the transactions. Um, in a few minutes, uh, in a, another video lecture, we're going to talk about concurrency control um, to ensure data integrity because again, uh, we need some kind of locking mechanism even in replicated data uh, to ensure data integrity. Um, and the failure transparency requires some kind of special commit protocol and we're going to talk about um, the commit protocol. Uh, well, I guess didn't talk too much on transparency objectives. So let's go right to the two-phase commit. Uh, so the special commit protocol um, is really the two-phase commit. Uh, so there is a preparation phase and there is a commit phase. So the preparation phase uh, is a message, uh, starts off with a message being broadcast to every participating site. So again, if we're in a horizontally partitioned uh, environment and we're setting up um, a transaction that's going to affect multiple nodes, uh, each site has to return okay or, or not okay that I'm ready to process this transaction or I can't process this transaction. So if all of them say okay, um, the remote sites are promising to allow uh, the initiating request to go to the transaction at the remote databases, um, which is significant. It has to, that has to happen. So if you don't have that, again, the transaction is going to hang. And then you have a commit phase. Uh, so the originating site has collected all the messages and they are all okay. It broadcasts the messages to all the sites to commit uh, a transaction uh, that's handled by each of those sites. Um, and then if one or more of the responses are not okay, it broadcasts a message to all the sites to abort the transaction. Or if the transaction fails during the commit phase, uh, it's in limbo. And a limbo transaction could be identified by a timeout or polling. Uh, in any case, it would be rolled back by all of the sites. But if it gets an OK back from all the sites, then the originating site realizes that the commit has happened on all the sites and it can move on. Um, so that is uh, the end of the video lecture associated with transparency objectives and the two-phase commit.